this. Give it everything. It's gonna be so close. This is very tight. I'm going wheel to wheel. I'm down for it. Through goes Hamilton. It's not over yet. Max Verstappen. Champion of the world. Hello, everybody. Good morning, if you're still watching this live, and welcome to the race notebook from the 2023 Japanese Grand Prix. Incredible. Incredible. Hashtag incredible. That's what they're calling it. And it was a very enjoyable race, wasn't it? I wonder if the bees enjoyed it on the inside of... I wonder if Seb's bees enjoyed it on the inside of turn two. Anyway, um, Sebastian Vettel, the man who's uh, built his insect houses, his four World Championships, Constructors' Championships uh, with Red Bull Racing, have now been added two by... Uh, Max Verstappen. So they're up to six. So congratulations uh, to Red Bull Racing. Listen, I know it's been coming the whole year. I know they've got more points than have ever been, you know, amassed by a single team in a, in a year. They, they won the Constructors' Championship ages ago, didn't they? But they didn't. They won it today. And we should congratulate Red Bull because they're the best. And everybody in the wor working in the factory gets a bonus. So if you're a kitchen manufacturer or in and around Tilbrook and Milton Keynes, don't be surprised if you get a load more orders on Monday morning because uh, the bonus that everybody gets is about enough for a new kitchen. So uh, everybody in the factory, everybody in the race team, everybody uh, who works, you know, in making this amazing car, they deserve to be rewarded, not only financially, but in pride alone because they have dominated the season. They built an amazing car. They've kept it reliable. Uh, all right, they couldn't stop Sergio Perez from clonking into a few people today, but they absolutely deserve it. And there it is, the winning car. And this is a moment of history, I think, ladies and gentlemen, as uh, the mechanics push us out of the way. But you can hear the cheers. This is a moment of history as they unceremoniously put the barriers up so that we can't witness the moment of history. This is a moment of history where the winning car for this year has been returned back into... Uh, Oh, well, it was a nice moment of history while it lasted, wasn't it? Uh, while the winning car has been uh, pushed back uh, into uh, the garage. And uh, let's have a look at the T-shirt. Constructors Champions 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2022, and 2023. Where does it say hashtag incredible? Oh, it doesn't. That's only on the flag. It's me. Okay. Okay. All right. You were around, you were around for a lot, most of these. Actually. All, all of them. Around. All of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Excellent work. That's, that's the that's the key. Is that um, you know that we're, 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 a, a lot of these guys were and are still at the team because you know they stick together, they win, they take pride in what they're doing, and uh, yeah, they're the best. They are the best at the moment. Um, I wonder if the horn dog is around. So we heard from Christian Horner uh, earlier. We can just sneak in to see. Well, you might not be able to see the car. You can certainly see people congratulating uh, each other around here. Christian Horner was around. Adrian Newey not, uh, interestingly, and even though I think this is Adrian Newey's, is it 13th Constructors win? Um, I, he is not here this weekend. He was in Singapore uh, and uh, has now, uh, I assume, uh, at home, maybe even watching this, and thinking, uh, well done me, well done Pierre Wache, and may, well done uh, to the designers and everybody in my team who've uh, won another Constructors uh, championship. It's 12th. Sorry, I believe it's Adrian Newey's 12th. I'll just correct myself uh, briefly on that. Um, where is Christian around? Mm, no. Well, should we tell you how, how they won it today? Uh, all they had to do was to outscore uh, Mercedes by at one point and hope that Ferrari didn't outscore them in a very major way, and they did that. Max Verstappen won. I mean, P1. Uh, and I want to see if the trophy was here with the old kissy lips thing. Now, I asked a couple of drivers. I asked one of the driver, a Ferrari driver, who was possibly likely or could might have. There's one driver who wasn't going to win the race, and I asked one driver who might have won the race at Ferrari. Had you had your lips scanned, like the PR said stuff said that you had, uh, so that the button that says "kiss me" on the trophy would recognise your lips, uh, you know, Max's lips or Carlos Sainz's, you know, lips, and would automatically light up with the flag of the originator of your lips or the, the owner of your lips. And both the drivers said, no, I haven't had my lips scanned. So unless they scanned them, which they might have done, I'm gonna give them, not gonna say that's, that's just a load of PR guff, because it might not be. Unless they scanned them from pictures, uh, and Max has got quite uh, distinctive lips, 
and then said, right, if you recognize these lips, button on the trophy, then please dis display the Dutch flag, then I think they probably programmed the trophy uh, probably after qualifying yesterday, or maybe after lap three or five when Max didn't get past by the McLarens, but the McLarens gave it a good go. Max managed uh, the attack of the two McLarens at the start. Um, I thought it was interesting, didn't you, how while Oscar sort of drew Max's fire on the inside, hello, uh, Lando, that gave Lando the opportunity to go around the outside and try and get Max. If that was McLaren's plan, then chef's kiss because it almost worked. Well, it was like a sort of paintball game, wasn't it? Well, well, while Oscar was drawing Max's defense, it gave Lando the opportunity to go around the outside. Max was too clever for that, and he cut Lando off and pushed him out, out the outside of Sebastian's B corner and made sure that he retained the lead. But that was crucial. Well, it wasn't crucial because he probably would have been able to overtake the uh, McLaren anyway, but it was fairly crucial because uh, he pitted twice Max uh, he still led after all of them, and he won by 19.3 seconds and wrapped up the Ch Constructors' Championship. As for Sergio Perez, he was a DNF, uh, then, he was a, then he was a not a DNF, and then he was a DNF again. Uh, he clashed with Lewis Hamilton at the start. He had to pit under the safety car uh, for a new nose. He served one of his penalties, but he didn't serve all of them. Uh, he overtook under safety car and got a five-second penalty. Then he hit Magnussen uh, and uh, had another pit stop. Uh, came in, uh, they stopped him for seven or eight laps, realized that there is a loophole in the rules that means that, here I go, I've written it down, uh, the stewards may, so the rule says, the stewards may impose a grid penalty at the next race if you don't serve your five second penalty for certain infringements. So may doesn't mean will, just like any doesn't mean all, I suppose. Uh, so um, I think, Jonathan Wheatley and the team were thinking, well, it's possible and maybe likely that the stewards will impose a grid penalty at the next race if you haven't served your penalty. So they saw that loophole. They asked the FIA if the FIA agreed with them if they rejoined the race and served the penalty, whether that will clear it up. Uh, the FIA said yes, so they did it, and it worked. Um, it was a bit bizarre watching Checo go back. I think he was in his jeans already, having an ice cream wasn't having ice cream, um, go back out, serve the penalty into this box, and then rejoin the race, and then only for, to retire again, only to DNF again. Um, but I, I can tell you that the FI, now having seen this uh, loophole, are rather minded to close it off quite quickly for the next race and say for certain infringements, if the penalty has not been served, then uh, it has to be uh, a grid penalty at the next race. They're not going to let uh, Red Bull get away with the, uh, uh, well, just um, gaming the rules, I suppose. They did it in a brilliant, I mean, it was clever, clever, don't get me wrong. Uh, you know, it was really clever. If I was the team manager, I'd be like, yeah, definitely do it. It's competitive, you're competitive. Ooh, the, the secret floor. Just as well it's covered up, lads. Well done, winning constructors. Yes, good, well done. Good, good floor, good floor. Um, yeah, it was, it was genius. If you're competitive, you're like, well, never mind the rules and the, the spirit of the rules. Let's do it. <laughs> I've been laughing all the way into my into my microphone. But great, it was a great wheeze. But the FI apparently aren't too happy about uh, 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 happy about um, it. Right, uh, let's get on to uh, Ferrari today. Uh, I haven't seen uh, the horn dog, Christian Horner, um, so. He's not around, so we can't talk to him, but I'm sure you would have heard of him already on the uh, the main show. Right, Ferrari. So uh, our colleagues from uh, Japanese TV wrapping up their program there. Right, uh, Ferrari, Carlos Sainz sixth and Charles Leclerc fourth. Uh, a few tenths off McLaren in qualifying meant that they were second se seven seconds, finished seven seconds behind Oscar Piastri. That's what it mounts up to, and that's why every tenth counts in Formula One. It's a bit of a lonely place race for Charles Leclerc, um, and uh, he just you know, finished fourth with no real hassle from anybody, uh, not even Lewis Hamilton at the end. Carlos Sainz, they tried an offset strategy to be quick at the end with fresher tyres, and it sort of worked, even though Carlos had been undercut earlier on. He was quicker in the race than he had been in qualifying, but he was always second in the strategy uh, actions and allocations was Carlos. Found himself behind the Mercs, took George Russell, but couldn't get Lewis Hamilton. And uh, Charles Leclerc was uh, five seconds clear of Lewis Hamilton in the end. So, uh, yeah. Not the heroics of Singapore. This track doesn't suit their car in the way Singapore did, but maybe Qatar will. But uh, yeah, they are behind on a more sort of aero uh, rewarding track. They are behind, well behind 
uh, McLaren this weekend. So uh, food for thought at Maranello as they're still living off the happiness of Singapore. Um, now this is the air freight, just so you know, you know we like to do uh, air freight chat. So this is the air freight, you know that because it's shaped to fit in the, uh, in the freighter uh, belly of a 777 freighter. So that will go straight to uh, Qatar, be flown to Qatar. So with all the, uh, with all, or we'll go back to, flown back to Maranello if they don't need it in Qatar, while all the ship freight from here, uh, I believe, goes back, has done its far, far eastern leg and goes back to the factory, uh, having been, uh, I think, in Baku previously uh, to here. Right, uh, let's do Mercedes. And, well, they didn't do what McLaren did today, which was uh, keep each other uh, out of contact and just focus on the game plan because Mercedes were fighting amongst themselves. And I said it in commentary, but I thought it was a good line. So indulgent, self-indulgently, I'll say it again. When the wolf's away, the mice will play. No, the cats will play. When the cat's away, the mice will play. What's the phrase, Lee? That's the original phrase. When the cat's away, the mice will play. So when the wolf's away, Toto Wolf's away, I know I'm laboring this, they certainly, the Lewis and the, the George played today. They were fighting each other uh, like uh, cats and mice or whatever you, you want to use. Uh, Lewis picked up front ring damage at the start, cost him a half a tenth or two, they thought, per lap with uh, Sergio Perez. And they took, fought very closely, Hamilton and George Russell. Um, George was saying, look, are we fighting each other or are we fighting everybody else? Um, they pitted Lewis on lap 17. Uh, and then eventually, if only actually, to get Lewis into the pits and to call off the fight with George because it was quite spirited. And then Russell thought, well, look, if Lewis is pitting now, you know, I'm not going to be able to undercut him. Why don't I try the one stop? It was kind of worth a try. Wasn't the fastest way to run the race today. Didn't stick to their, you know, maybe their plan of just doing the quickest way to run the Japanese Grand Prix, which is to do a two stop today, which is what Lewis and everybody else did. And that meant George only finished P7 and was passed by Charles Leclerc, uh, Carlos Sainz at the end. It was probably the right call as Russell's tyres, wrong call as Russell's tyres faded. And he was told to let Lewis Hamilton through to chase Charles Leclerc, but uh, Lewis couldn't. So I think in, in uh, conclusion, the one stop didn't work. But uh, yeah, Lewis more or less coming out and saying pretty much openly in every interview now, we are going to the Red Bull concept. We at Mercedes have seen what, Merce what McLaren have done, and they have essentially copied the uh, Red Bull concept and are going to go to that. And I thought it was very interesting when Lewis Hamilton said, you know, every time we add downforce, we get the bouncing again. So that porpoising, never far away the bouncing. So with this Mercedes concept, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work to try and get your car so close to the ground that you get lots of lovely downforce when it's not usable. It's not usable. It has to be usable downforce. And if that means you jack the car up a little bit, which might seem like the wrong thing to do in a wind tunnel, but if you get usable downforce like Red Bull have got, then that is the golden ticket. And that's what Lewis Hamilton is more or less saying now. We're going to abandon two years of a bad concept of Mercedes, and we're going to be back. And if Mercedes, if McLaren uh, can make the step forward that they did by copying the, uh, the concept, uh, and, uh, and, and Aston Martin can change their concept and make huge step forwards uh, in a season, then we can at Mercedes as well. Now, I wonder if the second and third place uh, trophies here at McLaren have the Kiss Me uh, illumination. But finally, if I couldn't see the, uh, the trophies at Red Bull, I could have a look at them uh, at uh, McLaren. I don't think they do, just having a look at these buttons here. Um, do they have the Kiss Me thing? No, they don't. They don't have the but they don't have the Kiss Me buttons, do they, the second and third? Oh, I'm getting in the way of your shot. I can't see. They don't have the they don't have the winners kiss me, do they? Just can I check the other side of them? They don't. They don't. No, they don't. All right. Okay. Sorry. No. no. Oh, never mind. Okay. Well, listen. Congratulations. Sorry to interrupt your photo. Yeah. We won't get you on TV. I promise. Yeah. We won't. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. Should we do McLaren now while they've got the uh, the trophies? Because they're second and third today, and they stuck to the plan. Didn't go off off you know off the reservation like George Russell with a crazy one stop. They stuck to the plan. They started on the medium. They did uh, and they did a hard tire and then a hard tire. And they stacked the plan. Second only to, to uh, Oscar Piastri pitting a little bit earlier under the virtual safety car, worth a try, and having a little bit of an advantage. But that meant with an earlier stop and longer to go on those tyres, he was vulnerable to Lando Norris. And that's why they eased Lando Norris past Oscar 
so that Lando could keep the pace and not be struggled for the best team result. And that worked brilliantly. Oscar said afterwards, look, you know, not the best pace today I've ever displayed, but I couldn't be happier. And I'll remember that podium, my first Grand Prix podium. Of course, he has been on the podium in a sprint race before, but not in a proper Formula One 53 lap Grand Prix. So that is officially Lando, uh, Oscar Piastri's first Grand Prix podium, P3, well done to him. But it's certainly not Lando Norris's first P2, not even this season. I think it's his third P2 this season. And I'm sure it won't be uh, going forward as he still chases his first F1 win. And uh, it'll, be, it'll be coming, won't it? Lando, if something happens to Max, Lando might even get a win with this car uh, later on in the season. Uh, we're going to get some arty shots here from the uh, McLaren. We'll stay out of their way. But yeah, they tried uh, using, as I said at the start, using Oscar to draw Max into a defense and try Lando something on the outside. Lovely idea, but didn't work. Uh, drive of the day for Oscar Piastri. So congratulations to him. Let's do Alpine, then we'll take a break. Uh, and it's an OK day today. They pit its ninth and 10th, so both score, the cars have scored points. And you know, I think that when you have both cars scoring points in a race, uh, a team has to conclude that's a positive day, even if it's only the two final points paying positions available. Ocon ninth, Gasly P10. Ocon pitted on lap one after he got a puncture from all the debris and rejoined P15. Uh, after that, Gasly pitted on lap 19, but had a slowish stop. They ran P8 and P10, but then I think they undercut Ocon so that he got ahead of Gasly. Gasly wasn't very happy about that. So on the road, it was Ocon leading Gasly. So the team swapped them so that Gasly could chase Alonso. But Gasly couldn't get Alonso, so they swapped them back. And it meant that Ocon was P9 and Gasly in P10. And apparently Pierre is not very happy about it because of the earlier undercut. But hey, they were doing the best. And I think whichever way uh, they cooked their particular uh, French cheesecake pudding croissant here, terrible metaphor, um, actually they would have ended up with the same positions. But what they didn't get was Fernando Alonso because he managed to stay ahead of both Alpines that I'm sure he would have been very amused and delighted about and helped Aston Martin in their seemingly now potentially flawed, fruitless and ultimately doomed attempt to stay ahead of McLaren in the Constructors' Championship. 49 points now. Aston Martin are still ahead of McLaren in the Constructors' Championship. And will Aston Martin be able to hold on for that position, that P3 in the Constructors, with uh, McLaren chasing them down like crazy? Uh, we will see. Right, there he goes. Uh, Lando and Oscar have done uh, top five uh, rate, uh, teams. So um, why don't you have a look at that? And you can do sort of some sort of arty pull focus, Lee. And we'll take a break. More notebook in a bit. Hiya, welcome back to the race notebook from the 2023 champion, Constructors' Championship deciding Japanese Grand Prix. And look at the uh, orderly way that the organizers here at the Suzuka circuit ask, politely ask the fans to get off the start-finish line so they, the teams can start packing everything up. And look at the orderly and polite way, respectful way that the fans uh, acquiesce to that request and uh, file their way out to get some trains uh, back to their accommodation or drive back to their house. That is Suzuka, and that is why you should definitely, at some point, now that the world is easier to travel around, and it's not as, as cheap as it used to be, come to the Japanese Grand Prix. It's a great experience. Not a great experience for Alfa Romeo Sauber today because they've got a DNF with Valtteri Bottas and Zhou Guangyu in 13th. Both were soft tyre starters because they had new softs to start on. Bottas moved across on Albon, caused an accident with the Williams, and Joe got damaged as well. So it was that Bottas not seeing uh, Alex Albon to his left, clonking into him, and the damage of that hit his teammate. So it was entirely self-inflicted. Uh, and uh, yeah, it took uh, Bottas out of the race after he'd done, uh, both had pitted early on for new uh, noses and for new tires. And then eventually Bottas was spun off by Sargent, pitted, and then retired uh, with too much damage. Zhou battled back, and he finished just behind Liam Lawson and y Yuki Tsunoda. He said, I was unlucky at the start, but actually, Zhou Guangyu thought that he had better pace than the Alpha Tauris, who finished ahead of him. And I think he's probably right, the Chinese driver. So uh, yeah, nice recovery, not so bad, uh, Zhou Guangyu. But it does mean that you've got no points today, just like Valtteri Bottas. And it's been a fairly miserable race from early on for them. Not so miserable, I've got to say, even though it looked that way with Fernando Alonso's, uh, what have you done here with strategy, guys? You fed me to the Lions. Uh, the lion, chief lion was Lewis Hamilton, who overtook Alonso quite easily. But then Alonso 
also held his own, really, and held it own really well because he finished P8 today. And I know they're 49 points ahead, only 49 defending that points in the, for McLaren, which surely they're going to lose, uh, seeing as we've got so many races to go for the end of the season and considering McLaren's pace, uh, they scored a whacking to second and third today. But Fernando's keeping his end up with P8. And Acani Alonso took advantage at the start, ran P6, pitted early and then was overtaken by Lewis and others, pitted again on lap uh, 25 and, uh, yeah, uh, tra um, managed to hold off uh, the attack from uh, Ocon and the Alpines behind and Gasly and uh, was were congratulated it for it on the radio afterwards. The team said to Alonso, well, we made you work there, Fernando, but well done. Uh, you beat the Alpines and uh, Fernando was saying, yeah, okay, well done, guys. Trademark good start from Lance Stroll up to P12 from P17. Another brilliant one for Lancey. So well done, Lance. I mean, I know he struggles in qualifying, but that is an ace start once again. Uh, we haven't got the list of where the... Uh, where this is another air palette, isn't it? Yeah, yes, it is. It's not any of the sea, sea freight. Um, uh, so, you know, Lancey got a great start, uh, up five places, and uh, but then his rear wing failed and he was retired due to safety reasons. So bad luck, Lance, after not a great weekend. Oh, look, we got the uh, McLaren boys uh, coming back. And that's, uh, they're doing their own social media stuff, so I probably won't, um, uh, maybe I'll high five them. Uh, but uh, Haas, Hulkenberg 14th, Kevin Magnussen 15th, and a great start for Hulkenberg, P18, from P18 up to P12. They pitted on lap eight, and again on lap 38, but not great pace, and finished second last. Hulkenberg finished second last, three seconds behind Joe. Um, are they doing, what are they doing? Look, you see, they do these things. If you watch them on social media, that's what happens, so they do that. It looks like they're not ready to do it yet. Are you having the race explained to you? Much, yeah. we weirdly. Yeah. OK. I wonder whether they're not watching it, because they're in it. Although, Lando, you saw a lot of it on the, uh, on the TV, you said. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Good. Well done on the second. Thank you. Well done on your first podium. Thank you. Typically awkward, I'll let you go. Yeah, bye. I've got the rest to do. I haven't got, any, I haven't got much time. Uh, right, uh, so Kevin Magnussen was spun around by uh, oh here is Max Verstappen coming down oh they're all using the escape road to uh, to come down also doing their own in-house social media stuff uh, so yeah so Kevin Magnussen was spun around got damaged the car said sorry guys but they said to Kevin Magnussen it's not your fault you got spun around by Sergio Perez and picked up damage he finished 19 seconds behind Nika Hulkenberg so Kevin Magnussen and Hulkenberg for Haas were the two last of the finishers of the last finishers uh, today so uh, Max doesn't like to address camera, it seems. He likes to answer this guy's question in the Red Bull hat uh, for the social media. So, yeah, different horses for courses. So uh, they have a, he does a little interview with a, with a team member. Well done, Max. Oh, he can't hear me. Uh, right, so that's, Hull, that's Haas, Alpha Tauri, uh, Yuki Sonoda 12th, Liam Lawson 11th, and both soft tyre starters. They fought like playful puppies on lap one. Uh, the order was Lawson Sonoda, then Yuki was undercut, Yuki undercut Liam Lawson, and then Lawson pitted second time, second, second time round. Uh, for, sorry, Lawson pitted for the second time on lap 26, and he undercut Sonoda. Yuki got very close, but had to let Max by and lost time, and afterwards was very cross that Liam Lawson had been undercut in front of him. But, uh, well, it didn't manage. They didn't get any points, but Liam Lawson uh, got closest with P11. We're on Alpha Tauri. Uh, Lee, I know you're uh, interested in what's going on at Haas, but uh, we were on Alpha Tauri. And then very shortly, we're at Williams. But, uh, yeah, I, well, I tell you just quickly, the last thing on Alpha Tauri is that Daniel Ricciardo is only 50-50. Ooh, maybe don't show the bottom of the floor. They probably won't, don't want us to see that. Uh, pan away, Lee, pan away. Don't show the floor. There we go. We're not showing, not looking at the floor because their upgrades actually have worked really well. So Alpha Tauri are not so far away from scoring points uh, pretty much at every race towards the end of the year. Probably thanks to that floor. Hope we haven't given any secrets away, Franz Tost. Uh, <laughs> it's just, uh, just uh, if you do, although if you do bring it out of the pit lane, that kind of thing is likely to happen. Maybe put a cover on it like those Red Bull guys. Good idea. Right. Uh, yeah. Daniel Ricciardo, only 50-50 for a Qatar return. Uh, it's looking like his hand just needs... I think if he was rushed back and he needed to come back for a championship or something, he could come back and would come back in Qatar. He doesn't. He's not in the championship. 
So they want to make sure that it's properly doesn't hurt anymore, which apparently it doesn't, and that everything is healed. And he's been in the simulator enough times. Even though we've got two weeks to Qatar now, and we've got another two weeks between Austin, if you give him that four-week gap to Austin, he'll be definitely be ready for Austin. And maybe he can come into the Austin paddock on that horse again. Horsey McHorseface. Uh, he's probably still got the pass, that horse. And Daniel can be the great return on the horse into the paddock, saying, I'm back, look hand all healed that's a good idea for you danny rick don't bother coming back to for qatar you don't need to let liam have one last one uh, before he goes into uh, his new job as a reserve driver not a race driver and see if you can go uh, back to uh, uh, come back for austin and finally it's been not a great day at williams uh, logan Sargent got a 10 second pit lane stop go penalty in the pit lane and a start from the pit lane before the race even started because williams had to start uh, rebuilding his car from the qualifying crash earlier than they were allowed to because if they didn't start last night they wouldn't have got the job done and so they accepted that they were going to get a 10 second uh, stop go penalty and a pit lane start so they want the rules to be uh, tweaked uh, so another rule change for the for the FIA the FIA kind of admitted that it was a bit of a big ask to rebuild a whole car uh, after a qualifying smash only starting at 9 a.m. on Sunday morning so I think that will change Alex Albon was hit by Valtteri Bottas as I've already said was left with high, uh, high, a highly damaged floor there was too much damage to re to continue so Alex Albon was a DNF and Logan uh, pitted uh, on lap one then he got damage also from that and there was too much damage uh, for him to continue so better luck next time uh, Williams right that is it well you've seen it and you've seen them haven't you they look they all look very happy congratulations to McLaren to Oscar Piastri who's got his first of what I'm sure will be many uh, F1 podiums Grand Prix podiums congratulations to Lando Norris another P2 and the biggest congratulations to Max Verstappen and to Red Bull Racing six times now constructors champions in Formula One we take our hat off to them at Milton Keynes and we will see you in Doha Qatar on the 6th 7th and 8th of October in two weeks time thanks very much for joining us this weekend from the double header here in Singapore uh, here in uh, back in Singapore and here in Japan and we'll see you uh, from the desert of Doha in a couple of weeks time bye-bye Sky Sports F1 feel it all